everyone, my name is Paulina and I'm a physical therapist and you are watching Clinical Sprinkles. Today's topic is going to be about therapeutic ultrasounds. I volunteered to do this in service because I thought it would be a great refresher for me and also the staff on how and when to prescribe ultrasounds. I came from a background where ultrasound was not very used where I was working, so in like the three and a half years of practice in outpatient ortho, I only gave it to like three or four patients, which is not a lot because coming into this new clinic, almost, I feel like over half of the patients are getting ultrasound, and so what I wanted to do was do this in service to figure out um, if we're going to do it, let's at least be intentional and not just give continuous ultrasound to everybody. There was not one single person that was getting pulsed and so what I want to do is talk about the difference between pulsed versus continuous and when to use it, who to use it on, and how to educate the patient on when best to use it. Stick around to the end so that you can hear about how the staff took the information. What I'm going to do is go through the, the lecture slides and then I'll put them up as I kind of do like a voiceover so you'll hear me talking about it and then I'll put the slides up so that you can read along. Therapeutic ultrasound. So here's the first slide. It is indications, contraindications, and precautions. So within the indications, this is when we should be giving it to people. Most common reasons that I see ultrasound used for is for pain, muscle spasms, or for soft tissue repair. Then we see in the next column the contraindications and these are for reasons where someone absolutely should not be getting ultrasound. And then the precautions, these are things to kind of keep an eye out for and making sure that we're not doing ultrasound over these specific areas. So then it breaks down the objective of ultrasound. Are we trying to do get a thermal or a non-thermal effect from it? So. Thermal is used for increasing collagen extensibility, decreasing joint stiffness, pain relief, increasing blood flow, and decrease to muscle spasm. So thermal generally it will help with tissue stretching. Um, if we're going to do any manual techniques, this is a good way to prepare the tissues so that by having the increased blood flow to the area, that it will make it easier for the tissue to be stretched. Then we have non-thermal effects, which is stimulation of tissue regeneration, increasing cellular responsiveness, pain relief, soft tissue repair, increasing cell membrane permeability. Non-thermal effects are for more of the tissue regeneration for the soft tissue healing, I would say. Helping with soft tissue healing, I would think more of patients who are acute that may need more help with um, that inflammatory phase, uh, helping with the cellular responsiveness. Um, so then we kind of go a little bit more into the thermal effects, which is prior to stretching of adaptively shortened tissues to increase local blood flow, decrease viscosity of fluids in the tissue, and to control pain. So both thermal and non-thermal are for reducing pain, but this one just sounds more like helping with tissue stretching. Like if you increase blood flow to the area, decrease or and increase the collagen extensibility, you're gonna get better stretching of the tissues by using ultrasound first. Then it breaks down into the non-thermal effects is to promote healing of soft tissues such as wound care, tissue inflammation, and bone healing. And I'll talk more about the bone healing later. So promoting the healing of soft tissues, I would think of someone who is acute, who has that inflammatory response that needs a little boost, this would be good for those types of patients. And one of the things that I noted was when using thermal level ultrasound, non-thermal effects are likely being manifested as well, so you're keeping that in mind. So when you're using the thermal, that you're expecting the cell permeability to still increase and you're creating that. that you're facilitating that healing response by using both. By doing it that way, it seems less uh, purposeful, less, less intentional, less directional. So then the next slide, this is an easy table reference for targeting, specifically for targeting tissue depth. Whether it's superficial or deep, you're gonna change the frequency. One megahertz is for deeper tissues, two to five centimeters. 
three megahertz is for one to two centimeters. So we're being mindful of what tissue area we're targeting. One example is the cervical spine. If I see someone working over the cervical spine, there's not a lot of soft tissue over the facet joint, so I would rather set it at three megahertz because that's not that much tissue to have to go through to target the area that you're targeting versus a deeper area like the lumbar paraspinals, one megahertz seems more appropriate for that area. And then it breaks down, here's the category for thermal. Thermal is you would set the duty cycle to 100% and you're still keeping in mind whether you're targeting deep or superficial tissues. And then I've listed the intensities um, for each of those settings. Then we look at the non-thermal effects, which in research there's less for the 10% and the 50% settings. So 20% pulse is more widely studied and so the intensity I had listed through there. The next slide is the effective radiating area. So I put this slide in because in our clinic there's two ultrasound machines with two different size heads and so that's why I put this slide in is that we're being mindful that the area of the transducer from which the ultrasound energy radiates is always smaller than the sound head. If we're doing larger tissue areas we're using the larger sound head and if we're doing smaller tissue areas we're doing the smaller sound head. I'm not saying that the staff weren't already being mindful of this but it was an observation I made that was that the, between the two machines they had different sound heads and just wanted to highlight making sure that people were being mindful of that when they were selecting their machine. Here was a reference for bone fractures and I had seen a study that said for the use of bone fractures, it helped with healing at a very low intensity setting. So you can see here, this is 0.15 watts per centimeter squared compared to the other pulsed 20% setting for non-thermal was minimum 0.5. So you can tell that the intensity of the bone fracture settings is much, much lower and you're still using the 20% duty cycle. So you could use it, but making sure that it's at a very super low setting. So then here comes the research and, you know, pulling back from research, like what the pyramid of, you know, which ones are the best, a systematic review is always going to be the best, but I wanted to pull from this randomized control trial because I thought the information from the study was relevant to choosing whether to use the thermal or non-thermal. So I wanted to pull in this study because it compared the effect of soft tissue mobilization with ultrasound. So in this study there were 23 individuals with these inclusion criteria and then it highlights the outcome measures that were used, most of them being subjective with the bottom two being objective. And then the interventions that were used were soft tissue mobilization, 15 minutes, and they tried to direct how many minutes were spent on each body region. And therapeutic ultrasound was applied to two different areas and the settings provided. In the discussion, they talked about how soft tissue mobilization may yield greater immediate improvements in range of motion, disability, and patient perceived improvements as compared to ultrasound. One of the limitations the authors highlighted was that they only measured the immediate and short-term effects versus what the long-term efficacy, long efficacy is. So then the next study I wanted to pull in was hematological changes produced by the 1 megahertz continuous ultrasound applied to the acute phase of iatrogenic muscle injury in rats. So in this study they had rats and inflicted a muscle injury on the rats and then did continuous ultrasound on them and measured what the blood activity level showed. There was a reduction of red blood cells and an increase in white blood cells favoring hemorrhage and increasing inflammatory process. So in an acute injury, what it's gonna do is increase the, blood, the white blood cells for, for healing, but also increases the inflammatory process. So I wanted to highlight this one because my thought is, if someone's already has like an acute injury, do you wanna cause more inflammation to that area? Is that good, is that bad? I think that what we should do rather is to use it on a pulse setting to help with increased permeability and the, with the tissue healing response rather than causing even more of an inflammatory response because our bodies are already naturally going to do that. The next slide I wanted to highlight was just low intensity ultrasound for promoting soft tissue healing. A systematic review, again, one of the higher level, it is the highest level of research 
and this one said that there was beneficial effects on tendon strength and collagen synthesis. So this study says ultrasound works. It's effective for these things. And what I wanted to highlight and bring this one back was for, I get it, ultrasound is helpful. It's been studied very widely and I only pulled specific studies based on what I had seen in the clinic and topics that I wanted to highlight. But there are a ton of studies that show that ultrasound is effective. And so I wanted to pull that back in. It's like, I get it, patients can have it. But my thought is that I want to make sure that we're at least providing it correctly, appropriately, and making sure the patient gets what's best for them. So that leads me to my next slide, which is patient education. So I kind of did it as an activity uh, within the in-service of each person going around and explaining how, what they tell patients when it's their first time getting ultrasound. The way that I explain ultrasound to patients if it's their first time receiving it is therapeutic ultrasound is a modality used to create sound waves through tissues to create vibrations and help with the healing process. There's two there's two setting, one is for heating and the other one is to help more with on the cellular level. Sometimes there's a combination of both, but like if there's generally a thermal and non-thermal component. So I wanted to go over patient expectations of what they should feel during the treatment, after the treatment, and how many sessions of ultrasound they should expect within their episode of care. I was seeing that patients were getting it for very, a ton of visits, lots of visits, and not a lot of improvement. So I think in some of those cases, I was having the conversation with the patient of, maybe we should be trying a different modality or a different intervention if we haven't been seeing change. So having that conversation early with the patient of, let's try this for a few sessions and see if we're getting changes. If not, we're gonna move on. That also kind of builds onto the therapeutic alliance is that you're communicating with them what you're doing, why you're doing it, and that you're aware that if this thing isn't working, we're gonna try something else. I think also at this clinic with a lot of patients getting ultrasound for so many visits, it's been hard to wean some of them off of it. And what that means is the way that I do it is I tell them like, hey, I see that you've had ultrasound for X number of visits and your pain level is still elevated. Let's see what it looks like if we didn't do ultrasound this visit. And if by the time you leave here, you're feeling like you missed out, we'll add it back into your next physical therapy session and see what that, and, and so that way you're letting them know that we're just like dabbling and trying to see what that looks like. And if it wasn't to their liking, that therapeutic alliance, that shared decision making of, okay, well then we'll add it back in. But my feeling, my expertise says that we should start to wean you down. In the end, I wanted to just tie everything back together and say that ultrasound can be used effectively if used appropriately. We're not giving it to everyone just by, for the sake of giving it to everyone, but we're being really mindful of if we're gonna give it based on thermal versus non-thermal effects, and then also choosing the parameters based on the objective. Are we going for tissue depth? What parameters do you wanna set it at? And then you can change those from there. And then also selection of the sound head. Again, not to say that they weren't already thinking that, but just a friendly reminder. And then the patient education. Like I wanted us all to be on the same page of how we're describing it to patients and what their expectations are. Because if they see me one session and I say, let's not do it. And then they find out that they can go to a different provider and still get the treatment, that's not okay. Only because then we don't want the patient to feel like this person's the bad guy, this person's the good guy, but rather we're like all on the same page communicating what we've said with our patients that we share and what's gonna be best for them. Understanding, like just making sure that we're all working together as a team. Ultimately, I think the staff took the in-service pretty well because I, I come from a different background and I didn't use ultrasound that much. And so reviewing the research, as long as we're providing it appropriately for patients, there can be some benefit to it. And I think as long as it's not the standalone treatment and that we're doing a lot of patient education, therapeutic exercise, and kind of progressing them, or even including early on some stretches, exercises that they can be doing, my philosophy is that I want to help provide um, tools for patients and empower them to use their own bodies to help heal versus like l rely on me and become dependent on me to make you feel better. Although I'm happy to help people get through that painful and like difficult stage, 
I want patients to ultimately feel better and do things on their own. Especially with this in-service, I thought it was specific to, I designed it specifically for this clinic and I think that we had some great discussions based on specific cases that we have with our patients that are currently active and that when we're providing patient education that we're all on the same page, we're saying similar things. It doesn't have to be scripted, but as long as we're saying the same things and communicating with one another when someone is trying to wean a patient off of it or had the conversation of, hey, we're not gonna do it this time. If they wanna add it this time, they can, but Pauline approved of it. Like that keeps me in the loop, doesn't make me the bad guy. And so I wanted to make sure that we were having those conversations so that patients still have trust in me and with all the other staff as well. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you feel like you learned something, please give thumbs up and then please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on future episodes. And if you wanna learn more or follow me on Instagram, Otherwise, I hope to see you on the next episode.